Hey, greetings there, fellow makers. Bill here down in the shop. In fact, today I am live from the shop over on our Twitch channel. If you haven't had a chance to follow us on there, you should because we go live every week. This is Tuesday at around noon Pacific to do fun projects. And you can hang out with the prop tarts in the chat and watch as I work. Uh, today, I'm continuing work on the Star-Lord helmet. I'll be doing the painting today. Now, where we last left off, I've done quite a bit of work to get to where I am now. So, I'm gonna give you a quick rundown on what I did. First, I sanded the inside of the helmet. This is to prep it for laminating. Then I mixed up some epoxy coat. This is a gray, or you can get it in a red uh, epoxy. This is a very thick, layer that you put on vertical surfaces and it sticks there to prep it for uh, your fiberglass work. I brushed that in the inside of the helmet, fully covering everything, and then I let it cure for one hour. After that, I covered the inside of the helmet with a bunch of fiberglass mat. This is a fiberglass cloth that you can tear apart into little pieces by hand. I like it because it's easy to get it into weird shapes inside your pieces. Once that was in there, I mixed up a batch of epoxamite. This is the laminating epoxy. I mixed it up and used it to coat the inside of all that fiberglass mat. Once that was all done, I let the whole thing cure. Usually it takes a good overnight session for it to cure. So the next day, I started cleaning it up. There was a bunch of extra pieces sticking off all the sides, so I started by trimming that off just using some shears. The remaining bits were done with the rotary tool and a sanding bit. I also sanded the inside of the helmet to clean up all the jaggedy looking fiberglass bits so that this thing would be safe to put on your head. There was one little crack on the back of the helmet, so I did a quick bit of filling with some super glue and baby powder, and then that all got sanded flush, nice and smooth. At this point, it was ready to start painting, so I buffed up the surfaces of all of my parts using some fine steel wool. I also made a little stand to hold all of my tiny bits of the helmet. This would make it easier to paint them. Ready to go, everything got hit with a a nice coat of just normal rattle can primer. And of course, I let it all dry. Finally, I painted everything with two good coats of gloss black lacquer. And of course, I let it all dry. And that's where we are now today. So what I'm gonna do with you guys live on the stream is paint all the color. I've got some lacquer paints that will go on top of this black lacquer to make it look shiny and metal, just like in the movie. Most of these paints are these metalizer lacquer paints that I like oh so much. Some of them are a buffing version. This brass is a non-buffing version, but the gunmetal that I have is a buffing version. So you spray it on, let it dry, and then after about 10 minutes, you can buff it to get a really nice metallic sheen. Then to seal it all, I have their sealer for the metalizer. This is really good for sealing metal finishes and keeping that metallic shine. To apply these lacquers, you're going to need an airbrush. So we've got an airbrush here and we are ready to paint. So this paint's been sitting around a while and in the bottom you can see it's clumped up that's the pigment, and we want to make sure that's mixed in really well with the uh, thinner. Otherwise, it, you'll spray just the thinner, and you won't get any color on your piece. So that gets mixed up. I like to use a stick to kind of break it up a little bit, and then you can cap it off like so. Give it a good shake. Also, I want to show off how I'm looking at my reference images here. So I got my iPad here. I've got the uh, post that Will did over at WM Armory when he painted his. That's what I'm going to follow for my paint job. But my friends at Joby, the guys that make the Gorilla Pod here, hooked me up with this stand, which is kind of cool. It's designed to securely hold an iPad, which is awesome because I can use it as my reference. So I have my reference set right there, like so. And I got my thing. I got my paint ready to go. And I just have to load up my airbrush and start painting. We are ready to roll here. I've got my airbrush loaded up with that brass paint. Got it all mixed up. I've got some reference images here on my iPad ready to go so I know where to paint. I'm gonna be careful though. I just realized that I could overspray and hit my iPad. So let's move that kind of out of the way. If I'm if I'm painting my helmet in that direction, then I'm gonna hit my, my, uh, my iPad. Not the end of the world, I'm sure I could just clean this with some lacquer thinner, but I'm just gonna move that and my water well out of the way. So I've checked and double checked my reference images so I know what needs to be brass colored. So I'm gonna get going and just spray down some brass. And also, by the way, I have a fan going that's blowing air this way, keeping this lacquer from uh, getting all over me and in my face.
Look how shiny that is already. Just one layer on that gloss black makes it look so super shiny. Really is nice. All right, just went around his eyes there. Um, this cheek part here gets brass. And I'm spraying over everything. I'm gonna mask this and spray the next color on top of it. So I'm not worried about overspraying this first layer. That looks good. And then his, uh, this part here is all brass. And I'm gonna go over the edge as well. Really make sure that it gets covered. Oh, that looks nice. That is so freaking shiny, I love it. So there we go, the first layer is done and it really only needs that one layer to get that really nice shiny metallic finish. Cool, the helmet is drying back there. The lacquers actually dry really quickly, so I'm stoked about that. Next thing we're gonna do is paint all these tubes. I've got the stainless steel buffing metalizer lacquer in here. So I'm gonna spray this on all of these as well as some areas on these pieces here. Uh, this is super simple, I'm just gonna cover everything. First, I'm gonna turn on my airbrush. <laughs> there we go. That looks pretty good. So now it's got that base metal paint on there. Uh, we let it dry and then in about 10 minutes we can buff it with a cloth. This middle part's darker, so I'm gonna hold that. That doesn't need any paint, but these bands do. This part here needs it, this part here needs it. So I'm gonna just hand hold it. Yeah, I gotta put more. A little more paint in there. That's what we have there for that silver paint. So we'll let that dry and do some masking later and do the rest of the color. So it's been about 10 minutes since I sprayed this buffing stainless steel lacquer, so now I'm going to buff it. And I've just got this microfiber cloth here and I'm gonna just give it a rub down. Um, try not to be too aggressive with this. I don't wanna lift any of the paint off. It's a little bit subtle. Let's compare it to the other one. Yeah, that's not super, super aggressive. Let me try a uh, paper towel. I've done this before with paper towels and I think this has a little bit more texture to it. That's pretty good. So this part's a little bit flatter. This part's got a little bit more shine to it. You can kind of tell there. So you just give it a bit of a buff and that helps it bring out that metallic shine. So these are those buffing metalizer lacquers. There we go. Nice and shiny. So we painted this brass on about 20 minutes ago and believe it or not, it's actually dry enough now to mask. I did a test just to be sure. I just put some masking tape down on the back of the helmet here and none of the lacquer came off. It's one of the reasons why I like lacquers. They dry really fast. So I can start masking off all these brass areas so that our next layer of paint doesn't affect them. So we've got some masking options. I have this fro Delicate Surfaces Frog Tape. I have normal masking tape. This stuff is okay, uh, it's fairly cheap. And then I have this Tamiya stuff I just got and it's amazing, uh, really, really good stuff. I don't think I need this, but let's uh, do a little masking and see how it goes. So to mask off this part here, I can just take a piece of masking tape, like so. And this stuff is just the edge lock, I don't know. Some of the tapes are more aggressive, so I'm just do double checking. That actually took some of the paint off right there. So this stuff, not gonna use it. No good, but this delicate surfaces frog tape is usually a lot better about not pulling uh, stuff off. So I'm gonna cover most of the surface. I kind of missed a little bit. Let's try again. I'm gonna cover a whole chunk of this here, like so. And it doesn't need to be pretty, it just needs to cover everything. And I've got a really sharp 
X-Acto knife. I put a new blade in here so that I can trim off bits easily. Now I can use my thumbnail to push that groove in or these little wax sculpting tools are good for this sort of stuff. You can kind of push in that edge to get a good outline and then that's where it's going to get trimmed. So I take my sharp X-Acto knife and just trim along that line very carefully. I don't want to go into the model because those are parts I want to keep unscratched. But if I go like that and then peel that away, I've got a perfect masking line there and I can go in and my thumbnail and kind of push that in and fix it up a little bit. So again, I'll do that up on this top part here. And it's okay if I score the plastic a little bit because that's a deep groove where no one's going to see a scratch. Go around like so. It is imperative that you have a sharp knife for this. And there we go. So that's one little part there. I can continue that all the way around until the whole part is masked off. Got a lot of the masking done here. I'm just going to cover uh, the eyes now. Now to do all this detail stuff, I have this thin six millimeter Tamiya masking tape. And I'm gonna use that to just really just to do the edges. So like this part here, I'm just sort of gently, oops, doing my best to get this to go around the eyeball. Yep. Like that. Kind of like that. Only slightly better. Let's see if I can do that better. There we go. There we go. I can use my little tools here to help push it down into the crevice. And then when I'm done, I can take my knife and trim it. There we go. So that does the edge. And then the rest of this can get covered up with a bigger piece of masking tape. All of the brass areas have been masked off with this yellow masking tape. And now I have my stainless steel airbrush ready to go. I'm gonna do this mouth part and these cheek parts. And I think that's all uh, the lighter steel color on this helmet. Now, there might be some other tiny bits, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip those. I got a game plan, I'm going with it. So let's start with the mouth. All right. This, uh, whatever this part is, respirator maybe? So this part connects with the cheek area and I think that's where that color ends, kind of. All right, now I'm gonna go around these tubes on the cheek here. And again, this is all gonna get masked and painted later. The So I'm just going hog wild on this color. So I'll go over that whole area there and then I believe the tubes are a gunmetal. I'll do that once this is dry. Okay, next color is the darker gunmetal. You can see I masked these guys off here. This last part here needs to be darker than the rest of it. So that's what we're gonna do next. Got my gunmetal loaded up and I just have to spray it on carefully with probably a glove so that I don't get it all over my hands. Here we go. Now we're ready. Like that. Looks pretty good. There we go. And because I'm totally impatient, I will mask, uh, take the masking tape off now because that's how I roll. that oh. and like that and that's cool so we have this lighter silver color here and then we have this darker gun gunmetal color here that'll get buffed in 10 minutes so it should look really great um, on a quick side note it looks like I missed a little bit right there, but this uh, will go on the back side, so you'll never see it. No one will ever know, except for you and me. 
So I've given this enough time to dry and now I'm just buffing these parts here. You can see this one I've buffed, it's a little bit shinier than the rest of them. Uh, so I'm just going to keep buffing all these parts here, mask those off, and then I can finish up the spraying with some gunmetal. Now, we've done all the masking. Everything's masked. We have these cheek parts all masked off. They look nice. Ready to go with, I believe, the last layer of paint. I've just been wiping this down with a paper towel, make sure everything's nice and clean, no fingerprints, or dust, or anything on it. Um, for this, I've got my respirator because I'm going to spray a lot of paint. And even though I have a fan going, I want to make sure that I'm not huffing a bunch of lacquer. So that's what's going on next. Let's do this. All right. Mm -hmm. This stuff doesn't cover great. Uh, some of the gold spots need to get hit a couple times, I think. But we'll do one pass and assess. Alright, cool. That's pretty good. I'm just going to make sure there's some spots that have a little bit of that brass coming through. I'm just going to double double up and get those covered. This stuff dries really fast, so the first, the first pass I did is pretty much dry at this point. So I washed out my respirator, put it out in the sun to dry, and there's gold glitter sparkles all over yeah, it. Yeah, there is. Oh man, let's do a glitter. Just to give you an idea of how quickly this lacquer dries, it's totally dry. Good to go. We just want to give it uh, a little more time to dry. And then we can buff it. Ta-da! Cool. All right. The spray has dissipated. Uh, I've given this just a couple minutes to dry. Believe it or not, it's dry enough to touch the lacquer anyway. Uh, we want to give it a good 10 minutes before we do any buffing, but I'm impatient, so I'm going to take the masking tape off now. So, all that work, that like hour I took to mask all of this, well, we can just rip it all right off. And carefully, <laughs> carefully rip it all right off. And we can see the fruits of our labor. Like that. And then all this masking tape that I bought, well, we just go ahead and throw that away. Yeah. There we go. Look how shiny that brass is um, compared to the gunmetal. And we'll buff that. That'll be a little bit shinier. But the brass is the non-buffing stuff, and it... Uh, it looks really good without any buffing. I don't know what the secret is, but why one is a buffing one and why one of them isn't, but that's how it goes. Really, really enjoy this. Carefully. Also got, I've got, um, my tweezers. Those will help. Oh, it's so cool. Almost there. Oop. All these tiny little pieces. I want to just claw at it, but I will scratch it, so. Patience. Patience. There we go. Look at that. That looks so cool. It's gonna look even better once I buff all that. Let's grab these last couple bits here. Uh, there it is. I think that's all the masking tape. 
Look at that. Look at that. Super cool. All right, we'll let that dry, do a little bit of buffing, and then the base color of all the paint job is done. The last thing to do on the paint job today is gonna to be to buff it. So this gunmetal area here has all been buffed. This part over here has not, so it's got a bit less shine to it. So again, I have more paper towel here. You could use, uh, apparently the chat has told me you can use uh, cotton pads that have a bit more texture to them. Those work really well. I'm just using this because I have it. Uh, what's cool is buffing, especially like these edges here, it gives it that really nice high shine on those edges that really kind of helps set it apart there. We have the dark gunmetal here, but there's this nice shine along that edge. That's really awesome. These uh, these shallow details here get a nice bit of shine in them too once you buff them. And then I saved the face for last because I wanted to, I guess, do a reveal or something. I don't know. That looks so cool. All these lines and edges in there really get a really cool, like, almost scratched, shiny metal texture on them. Yeah. Oh, that looks so cool. All right, that is the base color of paint with all these lacquers on the Star-Lord helmet. I'm gonna let this dry a little bit and then I will seal it. For the ceiling, I have this Model Masters sealer for metalizers meant for this paint here. Uh, I'll do that off, off stream later in a little bit. Uh, then I'll let that dry and then this will be ready for weathering. And I think that's what we're gonna do next week on the live stream. So make sure you tune in for that. That's gonna be over on our Twitch channel. Of course, links to all the tools and materials that I used for this project can be listed down below if you wanna follow along with some of your own painting projects. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us today in the live stream. Thank you, Prop Darts. I see you over there in the chat. You guys are awesome. And thanks to you guys for watching our videos over on YouTube. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We've got videos like this coming out every single week. And plus, you wanna see how this thing comes together? We gotta weather it and then do some lights in the eyes. So that's all coming up in the next couple of weeks. Thanks again. We'll see y'all in the next build. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe so you don't miss any of our new weekly prop and costume tutorial videos. For more goodies, head over to our website where you'll find blueprints, tutorial books, articles, and more. We also have a second channel for our Q&A show and extra behind the scenes videos. Thanks again and happy crafting.